Okay, we're gonna go to the main hallway. And here we go. Okay, everybody, come on over here. Very nice. I feel a lot of people are in already. Very good. Okay, see if we can get everybody in the main hallway. We have 21 users total logged in, so that's very good. And we're still waiting for a few people to get over here. In the meantime, we can do some exercise. I'm going to wave my arms. Cheering, jumping jacks. Okay, we're still waiting for a few people to catch up. We have 20 users logged in now, but not everybody's here. Oh, a few more dropping in, very nice. Very good. Okay. If everybody can hear me, then let's practice some of our um, gestures, can we? Let's everybody cheer. Everybody cheer. Can you cheer for me? Maybe everybody try to use your gestures and cheer. Yeah, 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 that's it. Everybody cheer. One, two, three, cheer. Yay! Everybody wave. Wave your hand. Everybody wave. Nice. Okay, ready? Everybody laugh. Everybody laugh. Okay, good one. Everybody clap. Everybody clap together. Excellent. Okay, looks like we're doing good. So, we're all going to go into Chapter 5 today, Part 5. So, follow me, everyone. And then I'm going to go in the right room today. Last week I walked in the wrong room. So, Part 5, Distributive Tactics. That's right. Okay, everybody, follow me in here. That's right, everybody, come on in. Okay, now we're in our part area, and we're going to all go into room number one.
Okay, everybody, so come on into room number one. Okay, everybody, room number one. Okay, and here I go. Fly on up here where the vocabulary is. Okay, everybody, you can come on up here and see the vocabulary more clearly. And let's run through some of the vocabulary now. All right, everybody, come on up. Come on up. Page up to fly up. Page up to fly up. Okay. Now, if there's a problem and my audio is not clear, please don't be shy. Tell me. Okay, I'm going to run through some of the vocabulary for part five now. And uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? So today what we're talking about is distributive tactics. Last week we talked about distributive negotiation, which basically means win-lose, right? Win-lose. And now today we're going to talk about distributive tactics. And what are tactics? Remember we talked about strategies, are kind of the overall plan, the overall orientation. And tactics is how do you do it? How do you actually do it? So that's what this part's going to focus on. How do we actually do it? What do we say? What do we do in distributive? Now remember, Distributive is about one side wins, one side loses. One side gains a point, the other side loses a point. Just like a basketball game, right? So there's really no other way about this except to try to get as much as you can and give away as little as you can. Everything you give away is something you lose and the other side gains, and every, everything you get is something you win, you gain, and the other side loses. So all the vocabulary is kind of focused on that today. So let's take a look at some of the vocab, beginning with the word afford. Afford. So of course we often talk about we cannot afford this price. This price is too high or this price is too low. We can't afford it. So it's about money. Approve. Approve means somebody agrees. Now often we use this word approve when we're in a distributive negotiation because what we say is, I cannot approve that. In other words, I cannot give you what you want because I do not have the authority to approve it. So this approve word is really useful because this helps you to avoid personalizing the distributive negotiation. You don't say, I don't approve. If it was me, I would give it to you. You know, if it was up to me, I would like to be a nice guy and give you this, but I cannot approve it. Someone else must approve it. Who is that? Well, of course, it's my boss or someone else, right? So approve is a really useful word, and it's one way we try to not give things away. Authorize is very similar to approve. So Authorize means someone above you needs to approve. They need to say yes. So I need to get authorization from my boss. 
I cannot authorize this price. I would, I would like to give this to you, but this is beyond my authority. I cannot authorize it. Commit. Commit means that you make a promise or an assurance that if one side gives you something, you will give something. So commit also means that you're trying to emphasize something is really true, right? So can you commit to this shipping time? Can you commit to this price? And the answer would be yes, we, we can commit to this or no, we cannot commit to this means we cannot promise it, we cannot be sure. Commitment, of course, is the same thing, only it's the noun, meaning can you give me a commitment? So can you give me a commitment? What commitments do we have? Can you, can you commit? Can you do it? And then what commitment can you give me? Concession. A concession is when you give something up. Now remember when we began in part number one, we said that every negotiation no matter what, every negotiation has to have something in common and something different, right? If everything is in common, that is, I agree, you agree, there's no reason to negotiate. And if we have nothing in common, that is, I don't want something and you don't want something too, then there's nothing to negotiate either. So, the negotiation has some things in common and some things that are different. There's something we want that's the same, but there's also something we want that's different. So a concession means you give something up that maybe you don't want or maybe you do want. I don't know, that's a secret. But you give something to the other side that they want. That's a concession. Now, of course, in a distributive negotiation, the key is to not make many concessions or the concessions you make are actually not important to you, right? So that's when we talked about the opening price, the um, target price point, right? We talked about that bargaining range. Remember, a lot of information was secret. A lot of information was secret. Why secret? Because we don't want the other side to know. But we can try to fool the other side and make them think that we, we have a target price that actually is lower or higher than it really is. And then we can give them a concession. So for example, if I want to buy something and my target price is 100, I can tell you my target price is 80, even though my target price is 100 and then we can negotiate and I say okay okay I'll pay 90 I'll give you something I'll give you a concession so you see I gave you a concession but in reality that concession was not so important to me I made you think it's important but it wasn't so concessions are you give something up but it doesn't have to be something that you really want it could be something that you fool the other side into thinking you want so, concession, really important. In a distributive tactic, you want to give fewer concessions is better, or the concessions you give are not important to you. Contact, of course, contact means that you talk with the other side, usually face-to-face -face or using a video meeting or a space like this, or even through phone or email, but usually a live kind of contact, meaning we have contact, we're negotiating. Exploit means take advantage of. And here, the word exploit means that you want to learn about the other side's weaknesses. You want to find something out. Of course, a very easy example of this is what if the other side has a time pressure? What if the other side must buy a product getting ready for Christmas? And now is already November. Well, actually, it's too late. But let's just pretend it's not too late yet. So let's just say that you need to get something by November 15. You need to get a deal by November 15. But me, on the other hand, I don't have any pressure. I can take this deal or not take this deal. That's okay for me. So in that case, you're under pressure. I'm not under, I'm not under pressure. If I know you're under pressure, if you tell me, you say, oh, I need this deal before the 15th. Well, 
you've given me some important information. You should have kept that information secret, or you should have changed that information to fool me, but instead you were honest and you told me that information. Now I can tell you, oh, so you need a deal quickly. Well, let me see. Let me make you wait. And because I know this information, I'm going to exploit it. That means I know some information about you, about your company, about your team, about your offer, about your price, about your target price. I know something about that. And now I can use that to get more or I can use that to avoid giving you any concessions. Or I can use that to force you to give me concessions. So that knowing something is something you can exploit. Almost always it's information. Final push. Now final push is important because a distributive tactics means that you're trying to give less. You're trying to give few concessions. You're trying to exploit the other side's information. So you want to give up less and you want to gain more. That is not easy. It's not easy because the other side also wants to get more and give less, right? Both sides want to do this. So that means that the negotiation can easily get stuck. And usually where it gets stuck is at the very end, before the end of the negotiation. Before the end, we need to finish everything. And usually something gets held up, something gets a disagreement, something gets stuck. And in that case, we need what's called a final push. So in distributive tactics, we often talk about the final push. That means how to offer something or how to speak about something or how to, to set your, change your offer so that you can have a final push to get to the end, to get to an agreement. Of course, we don't want the other side to walk away. We don't want the other side to give up. We don't want to not get an agreement. A final push means how do we get an agreement? So it's positive. Hold out. Hold out. Hold out means to not give the other side what they want. To keep pushing on what you want or to keep asking for something that you want the other side to give you and you hold out. You refuse to change and you be stubborn. Be what we call in this, in this part tough. You have a tough negotiation stand, uh, stance. You hold out. Okay, influence. Influence is a, is a good one here because remember we want to give up less and we want to gain more. So how do we do that? Well, we try to influence the other side's thinking. And we have a great example in our dialogue today about influencing the other side. We'll talk about that in a minute. So influence the other side. Informal. Now informal means that it's something you kind of talk about, you agree maybe, but you don't write it down, it's not official. So it's very possible in a negotiation that you say, I can give you this informally, or let me informally, informally kind of talk about this. That means we can talk about it, but I'm not sure, I'm not commit, committed to it, I've not made a commitment. So informal is kind of the opposite of a commitment. In view of. Now in view of is a great little phrase we use because it's trying to explain I will give you something in view of you give me something. So kind of considered or in consideration of. So in view of the discount you're giving me I will order more. So you give me something I give you something in view of. Inventory, of course, is a very common business word. Inventory meaning how many products, how much. Usually these inventory are products that have been bought from the manufacturer but not sold to the consumer yet or not sold to the final buyer yet. So it's sitting there waiting to be sold. Of course, in business today, we would like to have zero inventory. Yes, we would like to have no inventory. So when you go to 7-Eleven, the goal of 7-Eleven is to have zero inventory. They just want to have the products that are sold on the shelf. And hopefully today the ones that sell are all gone. And tomorrow we bring in new ones and they will all sell. If you have inventory, that's not good because it's sitting there doing nothing. Limit. 
a limit. A limit is a boundary, a, a, a level or a line you can't go past. So you can very openly tell the other side. You can say, that's my limit. My limit is $100. I cannot go lower. That's my limit. Maximize. Now, maximize, of course, is what we're trying to do in a distributive negotiation. We need to maximize. Maximize very simply means you get more and you give less. You get more and you give less. Outcome. The outcome is what's going to be the end. What comes out of this negotiation. So the outcome is the final ending. Payment, of course, we use often just like inventory. Payment is how much are you going to pay? What's the money being paid? What's the total amount being paid? Priority. Priority meaning I treat you special, I give you something special, I put you number one on the list. So we can use this often when we're talking about relationships because remember we talked about it's important to think how important in the future is this relationship and you can tell the other side. This relationship is important. I want to give you priority. That is, I want to give you something special. I want to give you the product first. You are on the priority list. Production. Production, of course, is the manufacturing of the product. Reconsider. Reconsider means think about it again. And we often use this word in a tough negotiation because you'll say something like, please reconsider your offer. Please reconsider your price. I need you to reconsider your shipping terms. Or you can say, I cannot reconsider this. This is fixed. I cannot reconsider this. This is my limit. I cannot or I can reconsider it. So reconsider just means think about it some more, maybe change. Reduce. So of course, this is very simple. We want to reduce something and one side wants to increase something, right? So I want you to reduce your price or I want you to reduce your shipping time. I want you, I want you to reduce your uh, rejects. I want you to reduce your error rate. Secret. Now, secret, of course, is the information we're keeping secret. We cannot tell the other side. So, in distributive tactics, the secret information is key. Your secret information must stay secret. At the same time, the secret information of the other side, you would like to find out their secret information. This is why in business, when you watch movies or read some books maybe you often hear about you know people spying on other companies or trying to steal their email or or, or hack their computer network and that's because the secret information is so valuable it's not secret information about the products production usually it's more like what's their lowest price what's their production cost what are all of the things that go into their goal package for example if we know all those things, we can understand exactly what their target price is, what their resistance point is. And if we know their resistance point, we know that we can get the most, we can maximize. So, your secret information should stay secret. And the other side's secret information, you want to find out. Shipment. Shipment, of course, is sending the product uh, usually by boat or by airplane or by car or by uh, truck or delivery or however. It means that you send the product out. Special offer. Now, special offer means that you're giving some kind of special consideration, just like consideration or a concession. You're giving something. Again, you can say it's a special offer, but it doesn't have to be a special offer. So I could say, for example, my, my normal price is 100, but I'm going to give you a special offer of 95. My normal price is 100, but I'm going to give you a special offer of 95. Maybe my real price is not 100, but 90. And I tell you I'm giving you a special price of 95, but actually it's a special high price. It's not a special low price. So you don't have to tell the truth, right? So special offer just means in a distributive negotiation, you're trying to give less, 
get more. And one way to do that is to tell the other side, ah, I'm giving you a special offer. Split. Now split, of course, means to cut. Usually it means cut in half or cut into smaller parts. So often in the distributed negotiation, we will be stuck on something like maybe my price is 100 and your price is 90. And we can say we can split the price. We can split the difference. And it's 90, 100, we split it, it should be 95. So this is kind of a way to compromise. However, remember, I told you my price is 100. Is it really 100? That's my secret information. You don't know. So split does not have to be always true either. The term or the terms. So one term would be like the payment term or the price term. Together we call it the terms. So these would be things like the price, the shipping, the quality, the, the service. All of these things are called the terms. What do I get in this deal? Tough stand. A tough stand means that you're going to be very, um, how to say, difficult. Not difficult. But, uh, um, you don't want to give up anything. You don't want to give up any concessions. That is what in this part we're calling tough. So a tough stand means I'm going to give up nothing. That would be the toughest stand. I give up nothing, right? That would be very tough. Almost impossible. I mean, you can't really have a negotiation and, and give up nothing, but I guess it's possible. It's just it's very hard, right? So a tough stand means you give up little. Okay, upper limit. The upper limit is going to be your highest something. So it could be the highest price you'll pay. It could be the, the uh, highest volume you're willing to ship for the price. It could be the highest level of guarantee you're willing to give. It just means what's the top. This is my upper limit. We also can say lower limit, lower limit. What's my upper limit? What's my lower limit? So these will be the limits. I cannot go above this, my upper limit. Valuation. Valuation means what's the value of something, and it's an estimate. It's kind of a guess. How much is the value of something? So in this case, I could say the estimated value of this product in the market is 10 times higher than the price I am asking for. So you'll make a lot of money. So the valuation, kind of guessing the value. We often use this in negotiation to try to convince the other side that they're getting a good price. I'm giving you $10 price, but the valuation is 20. So I'm giving you half price, half off. Buy one, get one free almost. Okay, so that's our distributive tactic words. I'm going to fly down here to everybody. Here we go. So you can see that these words, many of them, some of them are very basic, right? Some of them are basic like term and uh, let me see. Shipment, right? Some of these are very basic words. But many of these words are very related to the distributive situation. That is to say, things like authorize, commit, final push, hold out, influence, limit, maximize, reconsider, secret, special offer, split, tough stand, valuation. These words are actually very related to this idea of I give up less and I try to gain more. I give up less and I try to gain more. Key point. Okay, so 
We're coming up on finishing our vocab for today. So are there any questions before we continue on to the introduction? Okay, everybody, follow me to the introduction. And we're going to do the introduction, and then we're going to take a break before the dialogue. So follow me. Next room. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to fly on up here to the introduction area. Here we go. Good. Roy is already here. Very good. Okay, the introduction is very straightforward, I think, because we've already learned about distributive negotiation, which means win-lose. You win, the other side loses. You lose, the other side wins. Everything you give up, the other side gains. Everything you gain, the other side gives up. Right? Win-lose situation. So, what we're talking about is this distributive bargaining is all about maximizing that means making the most making the most for what you got or what you get or what you already have getting the most value you can maximizing the deal how can you maximize well the interesting part about this is if you want to maximize you need to be very tough you need to negotiate very hard you cannot give up easily you cannot give concessions easily. You must make the other side fight for everything and struggle for everything they get. And that way, you give up less and you get more. Now, what's the key point to doing this? Well, the key point is information. Because the most important information, remember, is the resistance point. If you keep your resistance point secret, or you make the other side think something that's not true. For example, maybe I would like to buy something, and I am okay to pay $100. That's okay. But I tell the other side, I cannot go more than 90. My resistance point is 90. I cannot go more than 90. I cannot. 90 is my resistance point. I cannot go more than 90. And the other side believes me, and they say, hmm. Warden's resistance point is 90, so we'll give them we'll give him 90 or 89. And I say, oh, thank you, that was my resistance point. But in reality, my resistance point was 100. So I just made ten dollars. If you gave me 90, if you gave me 89, I made I made 11 dollars. Because I kept telling you, my resistance point is 90. Can you give me one dollar less than 90? Just one dollar less than 90. And then you say, oh, okay. I'll give you 89. And now I made $11 beyond my resistance point. And you lost $11 because it was possible I could have taken less. So that information is the key to your distributive bargaining. If you can find out the other side's information, then wow, you have a great advantage. If you can influence the other side, as I just did, I influence you to think my resistance point is 90. Actually, my resistance point is not 90, it's 100. But I make you feel, I make you think my resistance point is 90. So that's called influencing. So let's look at some of these points here. Some of the things you would like to do is, in a distributed negotiation, you want to find out the other side's you want to find out the other side's resistance point. That's a key one. If you can get that one, wow, you have a great great advantage. What's another thing you want to do? You want to influence the other side. 
influence the other side. And how do you in do that? Just like I just told you, my resistance point is 90, 90, 90. I keep telling you 90, and you believe me, I am influencing you. Another one is you can influence the other side's ideas about the outcome valuations. That means what do they get? So for example, I can tell you, the price of this product is 100. I know that you think this price is high. I know you think that, but you're going to really love this product. This is the best product ever. I'm trying to influence your feeling about the outcome. See, I'm trying to make you think, oh, after you buy this product, after you agree, you're going to get something that's really great, more value than you think. Of course, you can see this all the time. For example, if you go to buy shoes, or you go to buy clothes, or you go to buy makeup at the department store. Let's say you go to the department store and you go to the makeup counter, and, and what happens? The, the lady there helps you to put on some makeup and says, you look wonderful, you look beautiful. This is perfect for you. She's not trying to tell you that it's a great value. She's not trying to tell you that it's a great price. She's not trying to influence about her influence you about her resistance point. She's not doing that. She's trying to change the outcome value. She's saying, look, maybe you think this is expensive. I understand, but you look wonderful. This is perfect for you. This is exactly your skin tone. This makes you look great. Or you go to buy a suit. If you're a man, you go to buy a suit. And what do they do? They ask you to try on the suit. And when you try it on, what's the salesperson say? You look great. You look so handsome. You're gonna great you're gonna get so much success with this suit. That's trying to influence your outcome valuation. So that's one way, one tactic we can use in this distributive negotiation. And another one is influencing the cost of delaying. And we talked a little bit about this. So if you have a deadline, right? If you have a deadline, then I can make your deadline if I know you have a deadline, I can try to drag on, make things last longer, and that's going to hurt you because you have a deadline. You must finish by a certain time. Well, if that's true that you must finish by a certain time, then you are under pressure. I can also try to influence you. I can tell you that um, if you don't buy now, you're going to lose this chance. That's called influencing the feeling of the other side about the deadline. This is the cost of delaying. This special price is only one time, one time only offer. You must get it today. Today is the only time we have this special sale price. You must buy today. Certainly you've seen that on at department stores or on television home shopping. It's very common. This is a special one time price only. Or another thing we see is limited supply. So for example, on TV home shopping, they'll often say, we only have 20 units left. Only 20, you must buy now. It's a limited supply. So you see, limited supply is the same as limited time. If you don't act now, you're gonna lose something. And if you act now, you're gonna get something. So this is another way to influence the other side, to give up something, to feel pressure, and that you do not have to give something up. So these are tactics. Today's whole class is about how to do it, how to negotiate in a distributive situation. And it's a lot of pressure. It's not going to be easy, but he, these are some of the things we can do. So it is now time to take a break. I'm going to walk to the next room. So let's everybody follow me to the next room. So I'll go to the next room here. Okay, so we're going to look at the dialogue and I'm going to do as I've done previously, which means ask some people to participate with me. So, let's go ahead and uh, fly up to the dialogue here. Let me see, where does this one begin at? It begins on... Yes, over here. Here we go.
Okay, let's go ahead and begin this dialogue. So our first dialogue is between Jane and Ted. And this is a little personal dialogue, but it's, it's very interesting in how it tells us something about the distributive tactics. So let me go ahead and begin by looking for Karen. Is Karen here? Is Karen here? Karen? Could Karen come uh, forward here? Karen? No, no Karen? Karen? Ah, Karen, okay. Karen, can you turn your microphone volume up, about 20% up, your microphone sensitivity? Okay. Oh, that's way better. Wonderful. Very clear, too. So, I'm going to give you a point on your audio. Quality is very good. And now I want you to help me with the dialogue. So, I'll be Ted, and you be Jane, okay? All right, so you go ahead and read the first line. You go ahead and read the first sentence. It says, we can't buy. We can't buy a new generation. Okay, good. So you have to be, you have to be very strong, you see, because this is a tough negotiation. We can't buy a new television. <laughs> okay, now my line. Why not? This one is so old. We don't have enough money. Okay. I go on. I didn't hear the last part of the sentence. I, I heard you say we don't have enough money, and then? We especially can't afford the newest HD television. Right. Very good. Okay. Well, what is the upper limit we can afford? I don't think we can afford any of these television. But these are some great sale prices. Okay, Karen, go ahead, one more. They are all too expensive. Okay, so let's stop there for a minute, take a break. And I just want to show you, this is the beginning of a negotiation. It's just the beginning. But we can see here very, very clearly that in a distributive negotiation, each side has already taken a very strong stand. Ted wants to buy the TV. And he, you know, he just wants the new TV. It's very simple. But Jane, her position is equally simple. Her position is just no. So Ted tries to ask why and then Jane says money. Money's the problem. And so then Ted tries to influence that by saying well maybe we can get a sales price. You, you think money's important then we'll get a sale price. But then Jane says no, no price is low enough. So both sides are very clear. Both, si both sides are very uh, extreme in this way. Ted wants to buy, Jane is just absolutely no. And then Ted begins to try to find a way to influence her thinking. So, it's a sales price, that's good. The answer is still no. Uh, well, uh, the other one's too old. And they say the answer is still no. Okay, so now let me find the next person. Let me find Abby. Yes. Abby, I want you to be Jane, and I'll be Ted. And why don't you read the line that says they are all too expensive. You begin there. 
they are all too expensive. Yeah, I guess they are kind of expensive. I think we can hold out for a couple more years and just keep what we've got now. That's true. We should wait. Right. Okay. So let's stop there for a minute. And first of all, uh, Abby, your audio is very clear. So I'm going to give you a point for your clear audio. Very good job. Okay, so Thank you. we can see that what's happening here is Jane is very clear, right? She says no, and she says we should wait. Now, what does Ted do, though? Does Ted say, no, we cannot wait, we must buy right now? No, Ted does something interesting. He begins to agree. He begins to agree. He says, yes, you're right, I agree with you, you're right. Now, this is interesting. This is a tactic. Now, he's giving something up in a way, isn't he? He's saying, yes, I agree with you, you're right. But he's not giving up anything he needs. He's not saying, no, don't get a TV. He didn't say that yet. He's giving up something he doesn't really need. That is just to be nice. It's easy to be nice. It's nice to be nice. So he's, he's trying to influence Jane to think he understands her point. He actually agrees with her. And in this way, He's trying to find a way to influence her thinking, to change her decision. So let me go to the next person here, and that would be Tone. Is Tone here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you turn your microphone <coughs> down like 10%? Down, down 10%. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, you ready? It so... So I'll be Ted and you be Jane and I'll begin. We can get by with this old television. Need to save more money and spend less. You need to be more econ okay. economical. Try that word again. Economical. Economical. Okay. Can you turn your microphone sensitivity down about 20% more? Down 20%. Okay, and then try again. Say the word economical. Economical. Ah, much better, much better. So, I can give you a point for your audio. Very good. Okay. Okay, let me continue. I'm not thinking about me. I don't mind this old machine. But I was just thinking of your mother. What about, what about my mother? Oh, okay. All right, let's stop there for a second. So, we can see here what Ted's doing. Ted is going to try to change something. He's going to try to influence Jane. So he's saying, I agree with you. I think you're right. I understand you. You and me, we agree. But there's some place there's a problem. Now remember, negotiation always needs something you agree on and something where there's a problem, right? And in this case, he's saying, we agree, no problem. We don't even need to negotiate. I agree, no TV, I agree. But then he brings in the mother. Now why did he do that? Why did he bring in the mother? Well, let me ask someone else to help me now. So Ting, is Ting here? Ting. Can we find Ting? Is Ting here? Okay, Ting, if you're trying to talk, you need to press down on the mic to talk. You need to hold that button down while you're talking, not just press it once, right? So you need to press the talk, you need to hold it down, push the talk. Hello? Hello, hello. Ting, ting, ting. No ting? Okay, we'll jump down here then. Colin? Colin? Hello, Colin. Hello, Colin. Colin, no? 
Oh, Colin's absent, so he's, I guess he can't he can't answer if he's not here. But let me just double check here to make sure. So Coney, Coney's not here, right? Sam, Sam's absent. Uh, Boris, Boris is absent. Ah, oh, Boris is here. Okay. Coney, Coney's here. Okay, Coney, do you know that you you have a zero for attendance? So did you not check when you came in with? Uh, Sally, or, um, okay, right, right, so you need to either, when you come in, you need to make sure you check with uh, Sally, Emma, or Cindy to let them know you're here. Okay, so Colin, you're here. For sure that's you, right? Coney, right, you're Coney, for sure, you're Coney, right? <laughs> okay, Coney, so let me see, where was I? What about my mother? Okay, so I'm going to be Ted and you're going to be Jane, okay? Okay, so I'm going to begin. Well, you know your parents have that Sony HD television. And your mother really is picky about TV quality when she watches her shows. And isn't your mother going to stay with us in the summer for a month? If it was just us, I would say we don't really need it. But this is important for your mother. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Okay, Coney, can you increase your microphone sensitivity about 15%? Yes, increase. You're a little bit too low. How about low? A little bit better, yes. Okay. There's still some kind of fuzzy sound, so you might want to check with your friends and test. Uh, it's a little bit strange. Maybe your headphones need some adjustment. Okay, so uh, you're the only person from group two. Where are all your group mates? Where did they all go? I don't know. You're <laughs> home. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Maybe. Sleeping? It's getting late, okay. Okie dokie. So I'm going to jump down to group three here. So we can see what is Ted doing. Ted is beginning to change the outcome valuation. How is he doing that? He's saying, you know, if it was me, I agree. You and me, we're okay with the old TV. But it's not just you and me. It's your mother she's coming. And so he begins to introduce another reason. This changes. This is trying to change Jane's valuation. He's saying, it's not for me, it's not for you, it's for somebody else. So you need to change your value now. You need to change things like your resistance point because now all of a sudden, your resistance point, you did not consider your mother. Okay, so let me move on to group number three here. Is Charlie here? I see Charlie's absent, but did he come in late maybe? Charlie? No, Charlie. Okay, let me... Look for Betty. Betty? Is Betty here? Betty, Betty. No, no Betty. Amber? I'm here. Okay, good, Amber. Amber, can you lower your microphone sensitivity about 20%? Okay, can you say something? Hello. Hello. Okay, I can also hear myself. So, are you using your headphones? Okay, hello, testing. I can still hear myself. Are you using your headphones? Yes. Okay, lower your sensitivity about 30%. Lower your microphone sensitivity. Okay, try again. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. That's, a, that's better. Test, test. Yeah, it's much better. Okay. Okay, much better. Your microphone was too sensitive, so I could hear myself, and your sound was too loud. 
Okay, so I'm going to be Ted and you're Jane, right? And so I need you to begin the next sentence with okay. You read that sentence for me. Okay, I agree we need to get a better television. But we should shop around more and the comp compare prices, right? Okay, that is a good idea. But you know, QBook has a special offer this week. We don't need to make any payment for two months. Deal. I'm sorry, you got cut off. Can you say that again? Maybe, maybe that is a good deal. Okay. We can always find other buyers. Whoops, I'm sorry, I skipped the line here. Skip, skip, skip. That's it. That's the end of that one. Okay. So, uh, Amber, I give you a point for your audio and I give you a point for your participation. Remember, you need to keep your microphone sensitivity a little bit lower. Okay, so that's the end of this dialogue. So, what happened here at the very end of this dialogue? Because Jane changed her mind. Jane said, hey, maybe that's a good idea. Why did, why did she change her mind? Well, because the valuation, the outcome evaluation especially, has been changed. Because her mother is coming, and it's not Ted's mother, it's Jane's mother. So, Ted is saying, it's not for me, it's for mother. Not my mother, your mother. And maybe her mother is coming and she's going to help around the house. Maybe she's going to help take care of the children. Maybe she's going to help with many things. Maybe she's going to help cook dinner. So if she's doing all those things to help us, then she should have a TV she likes. And she likes to watch TV, by the way. So this should be valuable to you. Before it was just me, just Ted. And Jane said, for you, no. But for my mother, maybe yes. So you can see what's happened here. This began as a tough, uh, a very tough negotiation. It began with both sides just saying, basically, I want a TV, and the other side saying, no, you can't. And then we changed that. So that's a great example of changing the valuation, especially the outcome valuation. Let's come on over to the business dialogue, and we can see that. around here. Everybody come on over to the business dialogue. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to call on Veronica. Is Veronica here? Veronica? Veronica? Okay, no, Veronica? How about Joseph? Is Joseph here? Joseph? Hello, Professor Ah, oh, Joseph. Here. Joseph, Hi. good. Okay, are you using your headphones? It sounds like you're using an open mic. Do you have headphones? Joseph, are you using your headphones? Doesn't sound like it. It sounds like you're using the microphone in the PC. So you're the, a lot of noise. I can hear the computer fan. I can hear the computer hard disk. I can hear the room. 
so I need you to work on that. Okay, Joseph, let's read the next dialogue together. Let's see how that goes. And I'm going to be Ted, and you can be Ken. This is a business dialogue. So I'm going to begin. We can always find other buyers. I don't know where you got that information, but it is not true. This product has been selling very well. Okay, Joseph, you turned off there for a minute, so can you begin again? The sentence weave. Okay. And I say, I don't think so. Okay. All right, so Joseph, you need to work on your headphones. It doesn't sound like you have headphones to me. Okay. So you need to do that, and you have to <laughs> every week. You're now you're going to get deducted points if you don't take care of that. Okay, everyone. So we can see here what's happening is we're beginning the negotiation, and we can yeah. see that one side is saying that I think I know you have inventory. That means I know that you cannot sell your product. And what does Ken say? He says, "I can help you." And what does Ted say? No, your information's wrong. So here we're getting an idea of in the distributed negotiation, information is king. Information is everything. So if I know that your product is not selling well, I can give you more pressure. If I know that you have a big inventory, I can give you pressure. So this is this information you know. Of course. The other side denies it. They say, "Nope, your information is wrong. You don't know anything. You're wrong." But that's how a negotiation, a tough negotiation, goes. Okay, let me move on to next person here. That would be Roy. Is Roy here? Hello. Hello. Okay, so I'm gonna think Group Four is all using the same PC, right? <laughs> uh, me and Joseph are using the same one. All right. And do you not have the splitter for the headphone? Yeah, I have the splitter for the headphone. Okay, the how the microphone sounds like it's the PC microphone. Okay, but, but I just I, I don't know how to turn it off. Uh huh. Because it sounds yeah. like you're it sounds like you're far away. Oh really? Yes. Oh so is that better? Uh, now it sounds like you're still closer, but <laughs> you need oh. to you need to work with your friends and get this working. Okay, or every okay, week okay. it's going to be a problem. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay, Roy. So let's begin here.、Uh, I'm Ted, and you're Ken. So you please read the next sentence where it says, "Look." Okay, Roy. You begin with "Look." And remember, you have to press the button to talk. Hello, not hearing Hello. anything. Oh, there you go. Okay, go ahead. You begin、okay. with look. Okay, one quiet again, Ken. When you When you're going to talk, you need to press the button and you need to keep holding it down. No, we're not hearing anything. Roy, you want to try one more time? So hold the button down to talk. There, I can hear you now. So you begin with look. And then it stopped. <laughs> Roy, I, I think you're having some problem there controlling your audio. So let me jump over to Catherine. Is Catherine here? Catherine? Catherine's not here. Although she's she's not absent. Oh, 
yeah, Catherine. Catherine. Catherine, go to the um, Oh, okay. Camille? I'm here. Okay, very good. So, Camille, uh, let me see. I want you to read where it says look. Look, no one wants to exploit the situation, but we can walk away from this day, uh, from this today, and you'll end up with nothing. Right. Go on. We just don't need, um, wait for a second, I can't say a word. Oh, okay. Um, we just don't need this protect, uh, protect now. Uh, protect now. Mm -hmm. What kind of discount are you asking for? Uh, and they said fifty percent. Okay, that is more than I am authorized to approve. I'll have to contact my boss and get directions. I would agree if we weren't facing a uh, facing a deadline. That is far beyond my authorized bargaining limit. Wait. <laughs> I have my own upper limit also. And quite honestly. Wait. Sorry. Mm -hmm. This product just doesn't have a strong demand in our market. Okay, good, thank you. So we can see here in this example that each side is trying to not give something up. Right? Each side is saying, I can't, I can't go higher, I can't go lower. And then they say things like, for example, Ken says, um, I have a deadline. So it's trying to give the other side pressure. He says, look, I, you, I can't wait for you to talk to your boss. I cannot wait. We need it now. And then Ted is saying, well, you know, I would like to, but I can't. I need to talk to someone. This is above my authorization. That word is really useful to help, help things slow down because you're saying, I don't want to make this decision now, so I need to talk to my boss. That could take a long time. It could take an hour. It could take a day or more, right? So it's very normal. Okay. So now I'm going to look back for Catherine. Is Catherine back yet? Catherine returned. Okay, Catherine's not back, so I'm going to jump down. Oh, oh, oh. Catherine coming back. Catherine, is that you, Catherine? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to jump over to Flora here. So, Flora, is Flora here? Flora. Professor. Yes, okay. Professor. Flora, can you lower your micro microphone sensitivity about 20%? Professor. Okay, can you lower it another 20%? It's too loud. Is that better? Um, seems like no change. Go down 20% again. Who is in Guana? Is that better? No change. <laughs> so. So I'm asking you to lower your microphone sensitivity. Yeah, I lower it. Mm -hmm. So on the screen for Wonderland, on the right bottom corner, you can grab that little slider and move it down a little bit. Mm. That's better. Is that, better? Mm -hmm. that is better. That is better. Can you go down maybe another 10%? Oh, that went up. <laughs> okay. Okay.
Okay. All right. Okay. So hello, testing. Okay. All right. So can you say something and I can see if it's okay? Uh, now it's too low. So you need to go up a little bit and then put the microphone close to your mouth. Uh. Ah, that's better. Okay. Now, okay. So, um, let me see. I'm Ted, and you're Ken. So let let me read a sentence here. Uh, are you using a headphone or are you using your PC microphone? I'm using a, a microphone. Okay. Headset. A headset. Okay. Yeah. You might want to uh, test with some of your friends because it's got a little bit too much noise from your room. Very hard to uh, yeah. hear things. Okay. Okay, so I'll read the sentence first. Okay, so have you considered our new product that is in testing now? If we lose money on this deal, we may have to reconsider who we sell to in the future. How is the new product looking? It is a total redesign and has more features than any of the competitors' products. Here are some details. It looks good. Do you do any market testing? Responses are very positive. This new product is going to be a big hit. Of course, we are interested in getting priority on your new product supply. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so here we can see the situation where Ted is trying to say, you know, we need to think about the future. So Ted is trying to talk about the future in a way just like the situation with the TV, the future with your mother. This is the future of a new product. You know, when a company releases a new product, they don't have to sell it to everyone. They can sell it to just some distributors or some retailers. There may not be enough of the product produced, so it may have a limited supply. So, in this case, this is the point. He's saying, Ted is saying, you know, in the future we have a new product. Um, it's going to be very successful. It's going to be very popular. If you help me now, then I'll help you then. That's what he's saying. If you agree to my demands now, then in the future. I'll let you get priority on this new product. You can get this new product before the competitors do, so you can sell it. So this is a way to influence the other side. Okay, Janice, is Janice here? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. So let me see. I'm going to be Ted. So let me read this sentence here. This is going to make a lot of money for whoever is selling it. And we will only have one distributor the first year. In view of and okay, Janice, can you lower your mic sensitivity about twenty-five percent? Your mic is too loud. Okay, I'll try again. Hello. Ah, uh, much better. Okay, so you go ahead and read the sentence. Um, in view of maintaining a good relationship, we can reduce our demand to a forty percent discount. But this is our bottom line. Right. Okay. Good. So bottom line. Right. That's a good word. I know my boss is committed to maintaining a good relationship with your company. However, as I said, we can't take a loss on this deal. We have the best re retail channel for you. You guys have done a great job selling these products in the past, but recently our sales have slowed. Well, that is because there is no option. We need a more concrete commitment to uh, to the new product. Okay, good. So here we see this idea of this commitment. So Ken is saying, you know, you want me to help you now. And then in the future you'll give me the new product. Okay, that's good to say, but I need you to make a commitment. I need you to write it down. I need you to make it clear. You see, so both sides are trying to change the situation, right? Both sides are saying there's something else 
that we can think about. So this is a great way that in distributive negotiation you try to change the other side what they're giving you by letting them know some other information like about the future especially. Okay very good. So let me see who's left here. Celine? Is Celine here? Yes. Okay Celine you sound good. Very good. Yeah. So <laughs> Celine let me see. Uh, I am Ted and you're Ken. So let me read the next sentence. I'm sure we can make a strong commitment but first we need to complete this agreement. I might be able to move down on the discount if a strong commitment is made on the new product. I will need to check with our production department to be sure. But there should be no problem in supplying you with 250,000 units of the first production run. That would make you the exclusive distributor for at least three months. That split the difference. How? You give us a 35% discount and make an informal agreement on the first treatment of the new product. Done. Okay, good. So that's a great example of how we can bring in some other information, influence the outcome valuations, and then make some, in this case, splitting the difference because I don't have a formal commitment. I'm just saying we'll remember you. We'll try to remember you. We'll, we'll think of you. We'll give you the product first. But is that a contract? No, that's not a contract. So, so if you're not going to give me a contract, I cannot give you so much. I'll give you less of a discount, not 50% but 35%. Okay, so that's a great little dialogue, a great little example of how we can uh, negotiate in a distributive situation. Okay, we're running late on time. And so what I want to do is I want to jump to this, uh, talking about the detail of how this works. So please follow me. We're going to go through a couple rooms here. So everybody follow me. Here we go. Okay, everybody get in a little bit closer so you can hear me clearly. And I'm going to fly up to the slides up here. What I want to go over is the main idea of this chapter here. And I think this, uh, these two graphics here really make the main point clearly. So everybody come on, fly up here with me. right back here to where the graphic is. There we go. Yep, everybody come on, gather around these two pictures here, because these are really the main point. Okay, so... These two uh, graphics are what I really want to focus on today. And I think they're kind of easy to understand, but anyway, I still want to kind of go over them with you. Now, the first graphic has these two arrows, one going up and one going down, right? So we have the X axis and the Y axis. And on the one side, what, we're, what we see on the Y axis is about the concessions 
and that is the size. That is, how much do you give up? So, if we look at the if we look at the arrows, then at the bottom of the up and down the y-axis, that would be zero dollars. You give up zero, and at the top it would be more. In this case, four dollars. So we give up four dollars. Okay, so zero dollars to four dollars, and the x-axis is the number of concessions. That is. How many times do you give something up? How many times do you give something up? And of course, remember, in the distributive negotiation, the main goal is to not give anything up and to get the other side to give up to you. Right? That's a, that's the main idea. So, what does this first picture show us? Well, I think this first picture makes it very easy to understand. If you begin your price at, let's say, four dollars, let's pretend you're the salesperson. You're selling something, so your price is four. So you begin your opening offer four dollars, and then the other side says no, four is too high. And so what do you say in return? Your next offer is four dollars, and then the other side says no, no, that's that's too high. I can't do that.、Uh, and then you say, okay, well, I'll give you. Four dollars again. So you keep saying four dollars. The problem with that is that if you keep saying four dollars, it really looks like you can give something up. You did not give anything up so far, but you can. You just don't want to. You just don't want to work together. You just don't want to cooperate. You're just being stubborn. You're just not helping. Okay. So this idea of four dollars, four dollars, four dollars means the concession every time. I'm giving up the same amount, four dollars. But look at the other line. The other line begins at four dollars. So my opening offer is four.、And、then you say、oh, four. The buyer says four is too high. So what do I say? The seller says, okay, I'll give you two dollars. And then the buyer says, oh no, two dollars is too high. So what do I give you? The seller then gives you one fifty. Now you can see here what's happening is that four dollars to two dollars to one fifty means that each time you give a concession, you give something. If you give nothing, then the other side thinks you you can give something, you just don't want to. But if you give something, the other side thinks, oh, that's good, you're giving something, that's good. But if every time you give less, so four dollars is the first time, and then two dollars. Is the discount? That's a 50% discount, four to two. And then the next time you give one, you go to 150. So that's less. That's more,、uh, less than a 50% discount, right? You're just taking off a bit, 50 cents. The first time you took off two dollars. Now you take off 50 cents. So from 50% discount down to 25% discount on that discount. So your concessions become smaller and smaller. This makes the other side think that you're giving something, but the thing that you're giving is getting closer and closer to your resistance point, and that's the key point. So, as the time goes on, you need to give something. You cannot give nothing. But what should you give, and how much should you give? So you cannot give something small and then something big because if you give like 50 cents first, and then the other side says, "Oh, 50 cents, give me more," and you say, "Okay, I'll give you a dollar." Okay, now you just gave more, not less. And they say, and the other side says, "Oh, well, give me two dollars." Okay, I'll give you three dollars. I'll give you ten dollars off. And the the concessions you give get bigger and bigger. That makes the other side think. Your resistance point is still far away, so they can ask for more and more and more. So the key tactic here is that you cannot give nothing. You have to give something. But what do you give? Well, over time, you give less and less, and that makes the other side feel that you don't have much more to give. So that's a great little tactic. And I think this picture helps to make that very clear, right? Four, four, four means you give nothing. 
over that time. 4 to 150 means you give something but then you give a little bit less and a little bit less. And the other side feels you've given something and you're getting closer to your resistance point. Okay, that's the one thing I want to cover. The next thing I want to cover is the second picture here. And the second picture is really just showing the process of this negotiation. So we begin with the opening offer. And the opening offer is usually something like the, this price or the stated price. This is the price that is not secret, right? This is really the only information that is not secret. The opening offer. And so we try to make the opening offer that's not too extreme because it's, if, it, if the opening offer is past the resistance point, what will happen? The other side will walk away. That's not good. And then we have an opening attitude. And in this part, what we said is there's basically two attitudes. One is tough. That is, you keep giving nothing or very little. You're very tough or friendly. Friendly is, oh, I want to help you, let me give you something. But when you give something, you make sure you, each time you give something, it's less and less and less. And that way, the other side thinks, oh, at least you gave me something. Now, it may not be true. It may be very far away from your resistance point, right? Maybe your resistance point is 100, but you keep telling them that actually 90 is all you can give. So, it doesn't have to be true. It just needs to give the feeling to the other side. And that's really the key point to the tactics of distributive negotiation. It doesn't have to be real. It doesn't have to be true. But you want the other side to feel that you're doing something for them and that you're getting very close to your resistance point. And you don't want to pass the resistance point because you'll walk away. You'll just give up. You'll just say no. So these two pictures are very easy to understand. We begin with the opening offer, then we have an attitude. After the attitude, we have some concessions. First concessions, and then some more concessions. How do you make the concessions? You need to follow that picture up top, right? You need to give a little bit, and then a little bit less, and a little bit less. And then we have our final offer. So after some concessions, you give your final offer. And if the other side doesn't take the final offer, you threaten to walk away, or you threaten to stop or give up. That, that doesn't mean you have to. It's very normal in negotiations that one or both sides will threaten to leave. They'll say, that's my final offer. I cannot change. But then later they change anyway. Or you can say, it's the final offer, but I have some new information. I have something you didn't know. Maybe I have another product or another service you don't know about and I want to tell you, I want to show you and that's a good deal for you. So you can always do that. So in this chapter we've focused on these tactics and these two pictures here I think make it very easy to understand. I also want you to spend time on the phrases because the phrases and words are very key to the tactics, learning how to implement the tactics.